Hey there, everybody. Welcome to this Coda use case walkthrough. I'm Maria Marquis, and we're going to be talking about the two-way write-up today. So, Rocky, how would you describe a two-way write-up for someone who doesn't know what it is or doesn't know if they need it yet? Yeah, great question. Uh, the first thing that pops in my head is meeting killer. So it's really great. You can send out your two-way write-up for a proposal or an idea that you might have and get asynchronous feedback with things like reactions or voting columns. Uh, so it's a, it's a great write-up, and you can share it with your team to get that feedback. Excellent. Yeah, it goes beyond just, hey, here's some stuff, but you can actually get a pulse of where people are at and have a conversation even if you're not co-located. Yeah. So yeah. I've already shared this doc with Rocky. Let's imagine that Rocky and I, hey, we're going to start a coffee shop and we want to think about how to expand our drink offerings and what we've got. And we need to get everybody's input. Now, Rocky and I could start typing from scratch, but Rocky and I love to save time. Mm. So instead, we're going to type slash and one of the things we can choose is two-way write-up. Now, if you've never used Slash in Coda before, it is a gold mine. It is where you can find every single thing that we can do from templates to features to building blocks. So when in doubt, go to that Slash command. So I'm gonna press two-way write-up here, and this is gonna load in the template. So we've got a couple things going on here. At the very top, we've got a place where we can put some background. So give people context and information. So Rocky, I actually put together a whole coffee research slide deck. I'm gonna go Ooh. ahead and grab this link. We're gonna Love just it. copy that. And I'm gonna put it here in this background area because we could start typing, but I'm gonna just actually embed this information. And now I'm gonna expand it a little bit. Now we have that, and now we can put into a bit of a proposal here. So Rocky, I know you were working through the proposal. Could you go ahead and paste some of that information? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. We've got some details here about what we're thinking, why it matters. We can get everybody on the same page here. And now we could put in a couple options. So maybe over here, one of our options is uh, switch to oat milk as the default and offer um, bionic cheap lattes. Ooh, I don't know. Why that's not? great. That sounds awesome. <laughs> and I love it. We can have now Rocky's putting in the other option there. And we can even add more. And maybe I want my option to have a little more space. Notice I can go ahead and shrink these around however I like because we've got a nice little column going on there. Now, the next thing that we have here are what we call reactions. So these are different little buttons that we can click where we can actually get people's votes on things. Now, some of these are cool, but maybe we want to have um, something different or something a little bit more specific. If you ever want to add a reaction to your canvases, you can just do slash, you guessed it, and then reaction. So Rocky, if you think about what we're trying to do here, what might be a good reaction icon for working with our team on this coffee shop expansion? That's great. Um, so I'm thinking coffee, milk, now sheep has Ooh. popped in my head. So I'm wondering what pops up for these potential reaction types. I don't know that I've ever searched for any of these. Look at this. We've got, um, oh, there's this is coconut milk for sure. Ooh, Look at this actually great. I think is oat milk because it's like a little um, piece of grain Ooh. there. That's kind of fun. Okay. And then uh, maybe we'll do the sheep like you said. Love it. Excellent. So notice we can just put whatever we want in here to be able to give people the opportunity to just let us know how they're doing. So we can see votes very, very quickly. And maybe we wanted to hide that for now. If you right click on any of these reactions, notice you can change how they display. So right now it's the number, but if we want to see people, notice we see the little heads. And if we don't want those there, we can just see the votes that we've done in that spot. So these are some fun ways to change how those work out. So now we've got our options. But the other thing that we have here is this I'm done reading. Now, this is also a little reaction, just like we did up here. Right. Now, Rocky, do you want to talk a little bit about what this I'm done reading does for you when you're uh, sharing these Coda docs with your team? Oh, yeah. This, so this is my go-to. Anything else, you know, I might mix around, change out options or reactions. But for the I'm done reading, this makes me, uh, I, can, I can know right away what key stakeholders have completed the reading, right? And so I can go through there and I can hover over the top and see that Maria has finished. If I click on it, she can see that I finished. And maybe I've shared this out with 50 people, but I know like 15 really need to read this. Then I can go yeah. and bug those couple that maybe haven't finished the reading yet. So it's a great point of contact for me to check out those key stakeholders to see if they've finished reading the, the write-up. Totally. And I find that this is equally valuable before the meeting as well as mm -hmm. in the meeting. Maybe yes. you're the type of company that you give people time to read in the session. 
and then you want to know when is it time to begin, it's when everybody's faces show up here. Or it's a great way, kind of like when you go to traffic school, where you have to say, like, yes, I've done these things. It's a nice way to just ensure that everybody is truly on the same page. So those are the different areas where people can get the information out of our brains and then give us their reactions. But we also can then deepen the conversation with the other parts of this template, which we fondly call the Dory and the Pulse. So the first part here is the pulsing aspect. Because sometimes when we share information, you know, people have different opinions about it. And we don't yeah. want to anyone to maybe feel like they can't speak up, which is why I love this. What we can do is we can go ahead and click on this button. We can add how we feel. You know, maybe I'm feeling great. I love bionic sheep, yes. And now you've got my thing there. And I can see we've got Rocky adding uh, theirs. And notice I can toggle these on and off. So I can only see mine until I'm ready to see what everyone else thinks. As the meeting facilitator, it's a great way to give people the opportunity to share their true feedback without having their, um, their opinions being colored or affected by people around them. This also lets us know, is there more to talk about? Right? If we're all feeling great about it, we can move on. Keep it if going. you have a bit of a difference like we see here, it's probably time to chat. Yeah, Rocky, what do you think? No, I love it. I think that's exactly it. I think this is when I talk about meeting killer. If this gets sent out beforehand and you got sentiments that are all five and like, let's do this. That's 30 minutes back. You no longer have to meet because everybody's on the same page. Love it. That's exactly right. Yeah, excellent. The other thing I love is that we then have the topics for discussion because the pulse gives us one aspect. How are people feeling? But maybe we want to dig in a little bit deeper. So here we can have anybody in the meeting, doesn't matter if they're the boss or if they're the barista, you can click add a topic, it includes a little row down here, and I could say, um, where should we source our sheep? <laughs> and what I'd like is we can have everybody's questions here, and then we can have this upvote, downvote. Maybe I'm really interested in this one, I'm not really interested in this one, and notice, that it actually then resorts all of that based on where there's the most energy. So again, to Rocky's point about using our meeting time well, we want to be able to cover the questions and concerns that the most people have. Because now looking at this, I can see budget is the first thing we should be talking about. And maybe we don't need to talk about uh, the bionic sheep swag because not as many people have voted on it. <laughs> so it just allows us to use our precious resource, our time really well. Now, just like everything in Coda, you can customize these templates. So anytime you wanna change things, you can just right click on buttons and you could say add an idea instead. And you can change the color of things to make them pink. And maybe you wanna have a little sheep show up here, just like so. And just like that, you can be able to change some of these elements. You could say topics for conversation. You can also come in here and you can add columns, like maybe instead of upvote, downvote, maybe we wanna get rid of that downvoting option and we wanna add a different reaction column. So I could do a reaction. Uh, this could be like um, applause, right? Oh, nice. Can I get some claps for the bionic sheep swag though? Cause that's- <laughs> Yes, of course. Boom, clap, clap, clap. So you can just start to customize everything. But the key here is that this structure of the combination of context and proposal and details, moving into then multiple options for people to connect with you, allows you to number one, have a better idea of the type of conversation you're coming into in a meeting, and also letting everybody, even if they're not there, co-located with you, have a voice. And yeah. the other thing I love about this template is that it allows you to have a historical record of all of your decision making. Right? Why did we make this choice? Well, it's all documented here. Rocky, anything else about the two-way write-up that you think is important for folks to know as they're getting started? Man, I, th I think you really got it all, Maria. I think if I was gonna add anything, what I love about the two-way write-up is it's great standalone, asynchronous conversation. You have your notes column that you can respond to questions without having to meet, or it's a great primer for your meeting, right? Either at the very beginning of a meeting or sending out right, right prior to the meeting. So you can use it either way, uh, in conjunction with meetings, or like I said at the beginning, to kill the meetings and, and meet less. Yes, exactly. And either way, your meetings are gonna be better because either you're getting rid of the ones that don't need to happen, that should have been a Coda doc, and the ones that do need to happen <laughs> will be a lot richer and more inclusive for everybody on your team. All right, folks, so remember, if you're ready to get started with the two-way write-up, all you need to do is type slash and two-way write-up, grab it right there, and then customize to your heart's content, and we'll see you around. Thanks for being part of Coda. Thanks, y'all.